Hello everyone, welcome to a new session of TechCosa. Have you ever been on an airplane? Airplanes are great if you want to travel a large distance, but airplanes have some disadvantages that are sold by helicopters. So in this video, you will learn everything about helicopters. The first controlled and sustained flight of an airplane was conducted on 1903 by Wright brothers. Since then, airplanes become increasingly more powerful, but even then, their design and functionality have several limitations. What are the limitations of airplanes? Airplanes need a long runway to take off and land. Also, airplanes follow some strict navigation rules. The pilot cannot fly a plane in any direction he wishes. It is almost like a train that moves on a fixed railway line. But what if we need an aircraft to move according to our needs? Here we use another powerful flying machine called helicopter. A helicopter or a chopper is a type of aircraft that uses a rotating wings called rotor blade to fly. They are the critical components of a helicopter's flight. Helicopters have several advantages over fixed wings aircraft. First of all, they don't need long runways to operate. They can take off and land pretty much anywhere. It doesn't matter if you're in the middle of a forest or in the backyard of your home. When it comes to accessing small places, helicopters can do a lot that airplanes just cannot. This is very useful during military operations or even civilian or medical emergencies. Choppers can also post during flight to load and unload cargoes which is why they are so widely used during rescue operations around the world. Helicopters are not as fast as airplanes, but it can move easily through air and reach places where airplanes just cannot. But what makes the helicopter fly? Once the helicopter is off the ground, four aerodynamic forces acts on it. They are weight, thrust, drag and lift. Weight. Weight is the combined load of the helicopter which includes the weight of the helicopter itself, the people inside it and the cargo. This force pulls the helicopter downwards because of gravity. Thrust. Thrust is the force produced by the rotation of the helicopter blade. Its direction can be forward, backward, sideward or vertical. Drag Drag is the force that opposes the movement of the helicopter through the air. Finally, lift Lift is the upward force acting on the helicopter that pushes it up and makes it fly. For any object that flies in the air, it needs a force of lift that pushes it upwards. But that to happen, the air must pass through an airfoil. An airfoil is any surface that produces more lift than drag when passing through air at a given angle. So what's the airfoil in a helicopter? It's spinning blade. The blades of a chopper are uniquely designed so that they can generate a lift. The blades are curved on top and flatter on the bottom. This curved shape makes the air flow faster over the top and slower on the bottom. This causes the air pressure on the top of the blade to decrease and the air pressure on the bottom will be higher. This happens due to Bernoulli's principle that states that the increase in the speed of the fluid occurs simultaneously with decrease in the pressure exerted by the fluid. For helicopters, when air flows at a faster rate above the blade than below them, air pressure on top of the blade decreases. This air pressure difference between the top and the bottom layer of the rotor blade generates lift which gets the helicopter off the ground and keeps it in the air. The working principle of an airplane is similar to that of chopper. An airplane flies by moving very fast that enough air passes over its wings to produce lift. Whereas a helicopter flies by rotating its blades very fast through the air to generate lift. 
But unlike airplanes, helicopters cannot move with just one set of rotating blades. This is because of the Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. In helicopter, the rotator of the blade causes the body of the helicopter to rotate slowly in the opposite direction, which is exactly Newton's third law of motion. This kind of twisting force that causes rotation is known as torque and it makes the helicopter totally uncontrollable. This could cause the chopper to crash. Therefore, this torque generated by the main rotor blade must be compensated by using the tail rotor. You may have seen a second small rotor molded on the tail of the helicopter. It is called the tail rotor. It is the side wave pointed propeller powered by the engine of the chopper. This rotor counteracts the torque generated by the main rotor thereby ensuring that the aircraft remains stable during the flight. In some chopper, the tail rotor is built directly into the tail. This design is called a fenstron or fan tail. There are other designs of helicopter that does not have a physical tail rotor at all but instead uses a different method to counteract the torque produced by the main rotor. For example, a second rotor can be mounted below the main rotor. The blades of this rotor will spin in the opposite direction to compensate for the torque created by the main rotor. Some chopper also have rotor mounted on either ends of the craft that serve the same purpose. Helicopters move in different directions by generating lift on one side than other. So when they need to go left, they create more lift on right and vice versa. Helicopters cannot fly as high as airplanes. It is common for commercial airplanes to fly at an altitude of 35,000 to 40,000 feet. For helicopter, the range is much lower as they don't usually fly over a height of 10,000 feet. The higher you go in the air, the lower the air density becomes. This reduces the amount of lift the blade could generate as the air becomes too thin to produce enough lift in the blade of the helicopter. This is one of the reasons why it's considered so dangerous to fly helicopters in high altitude regions. However, specially designed helicopters can fly much higher than regular helicopters and can be used practically for special purposes. Okay, so that's it for helicopters. Hope this video was informative for you. So if you have any doubts and queries regarding this session, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. So see you all in the next video. Till then, bye bye.